Hello everyone and welcome to the Reigning Grades Kingdom. My name is Elle and today we're learning about a three-point test cross. A huge shout out to Esoteric Botanist for suggesting this video and I know it took forever to make but so did Mount Rushmore. But before we get into the video, make sure you go downstairs and click that like button and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell notification so you can be notified whenever I post a new video. Now without further ado, let's make it boom. All right, so this video is supplementary to my recombination mapping video, so I definitely suggest watching that as well to aid in your genetic studies. Now, what is this video going to help us do? Well, you should be able to determine the order of three alleles on a chromosome that are not deleted or rearranged or mutated. After all, this is simple genetics. Let's start out with some definitions. A test cross is used to understand the order of an organism's inherited genes. This is done by crossing the genes of an organism with another organism who possesses possesses a set of completely recessive genes. Parental genotype. This is the genotype of the parents and is very important to know when determining the recombination frequency of two alleles. Recombinants. Recombinants are genotypes that are a result of recombining what the parental alleles offered and a recombination frequency is a rough estimate which uses an arbitrary measuring system that tells you the distance between two alleles. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's get on with this test cross. So, in this impossible scenario, we have some monster friends who want to figure out the order of the alleles on the chromosomes that they passed on to their children. And in this monster world, short stature is S, big feet is BF, and one tooth is OT, and all those traits are dominant. And the parental genotypes are listed underneath their pictures. Now we have to list all the possible gametes that could have been donated by each parent and fortunately I made this example really easy and both parents can only donate one possible gamete each. For parent 1 the gamete is S dominant, BF and OT and for parent 2 the gamete is S, BF dominant and OT dominant. This is because both parents are homozygous for all three traits. If the parents were heterozygous for any or all of the traits, more gametes could be possible, but we're not here for confusion, we're here to gain an understanding. Let's say that the F1 offspring we are going to test is a tri-hybrid female, and she is test crossed with a rather dashing triple recessive male. Since our F1 subject is a tri-hybrid, there are eight possible gametic genotypes possible in this situation, so we first have to list those out. Now let's say that our monster friends have 1,448 offspring, and the number of each combination is listed alongside each combination. Note that although the alleles are listed in the order of S, B, F, O, T, that is a very arbitrary order because we do not actually know the true order at this time. So to start, we have to find which combinations have recombinants in them and between which two alleles they recombined. So we'll start with which combinations are recombinations between S and B, F. Since the parental genotypes are heterozygous, a recombination would mean that the S and B, F are either both dominant or both recessive. Now that we have those figured out, we must add up all the offspring that are recombinants. So 45 plus 40 plus 89 plus 94. Then we divide that by the 1,448 total offspring to get a recombination frequency of 18.5 mapping units. Now we have to repeat this with the two other arrangements for BF and OT. For BF and OT, the parentals are homozygous, so we must add up 45 plus 40 plus 3 plus 5, divide that by the total offspring to get a recombination frequency of 6.4 mapping units. And lastly, the S and OT are parentally heterozygous, so we add up the 89 plus 94 plus 3 plus 5 to get 13.2 mapping units. And now we can really map this out. Now that we finally have the mapping units to each and every single one of the combinations that we collected, we're going to put them together using a little bit of critical thinking. So if you, as you can see here, S and BF have the farthest distance in between them at 18.5. So S and BF are going to be one of these two, which means that OT is going to have to be in the middle. Then it begs the question, well, which one is closer to OT? And that happens to be BF. BF and OT are only 6.4 apart. So that means this one is going to be BF and this one is going to be S which means that the order is BF, OT, and S. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, wait a second, S and OT are 13.2 mapping units apart, and BF and OT are 6.4 mapping units apart, and if you add those together, 19.6 is greater than 18.5. And you're correct. But now that we have the map, 
we can figure out this conundrum. So let's really think about what happens when two genes cross over, shall we? If we were to look back at the chart that we had before and we were able to see two combinations that had the least amount of recombinants, we would see that it was S BF plus OT and S plus BF OT plus. Now the reason for this is because there has to be a double crossover in order for this to happen. In order for there to be a recessive S, a recessive OT, and a BF dominant, you're going to have to start here, go down to the recessive OT, and come back up to the BF. And same thing, if you wanted to have a dominant S, a dominant OT, but a recessive BF, you're going to have to start at the S dominant, travel over to the OT, and come back down, which shows us that we have double recombinants here for these two genotypes. So what does that mean about our 19.6 and our 18.5? Well, this means that when we were calculating the distance between BF and S, we didn't actually count these two double recombinants because they look as if they are the parental genotype, even though there is a double recombinance happening. And because of this, we only added up 45 plus 40 plus 89 plus 94 when we should have also added in these two double recombinants. And because they are double recombinants, we shouldn't just add them in once, we should add them in twice. So it should have been 45 plus 40 plus 89 plus 94 plus 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5. And if you do that on your calculator and you divide it by the 1448, you get exactly 19.6 mapping units. Now that concludes the video. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I hope that I helped you get an A on your next test. Much love forever and always from L, and I'll see you again soon in the kingdom.